the older dogs who will be their mentors that are running right alongside them. And those the young dogs have to pay attention to those subtle things it takes to be a great sled dog. But the final thing is something that comes from deep within each one of these dogs and it's called the instinct to pull. And what that is, it's a love, joy, and desire that each one of these dogs have to run as part of a team pulling a sled down the trail. But you can see, as we had dogs, we had power. So I modified this four-wheeler in a couple of ways to accommodate that power. Number one, I removed the engine because obviously I don't need an engine when I have this much. But I do need to be able to, when I have this much power, I do need to be able to slow these guys down. So I reinforced the brakes on these things to make sure that I don't swing out of control on uh, tight corners. But the final thing is, when you're pitching up a dog he took off. Summer, on a four-wheel <laughs> Somebody popped the tug line, and that could end up causing a traffic jam, so <laughs> we'll wait for just a sec, make sure about, okay, going out anyway, I guess. So we'll wait a sec to retrieve that one. And by the way, if you have a visitor out there, <laughs> we need to make sure that, uh, uh, there we go. There yep. we go. Okay, all right, take off, and I'll talk to you guys later. All right, I was going to say it's just a shame they're not eager to get going. Is you look at all that power now, and David is gone. But keep looking to the left, because you're going to see him again real quick. He's just going to do a U-turn, come from our right to our left, right between the two cabins, behind the dog pen. So keep your eyes open there. Lead dog, set the pace. Everybody else falls in behind. Rest of the dogs back here freaking out. Pick me, I want to go. <laughs> But don't worry, because every dog exercises every day at Trailbreaker, which is why they're so healthy and why they live so long. Granted, lived to be 17 and a half, ran over 41,000 miles in his career. Now keep looking to the left still, in between those same two cabins, but you want to focus on that trail and the sun at the base of the tall spruce trees a bit farther away from us. No way. Here we are, we're flying along on the far side of the lake, and uh, these guys are looking beautiful. They are going at about 20 miles an hour, which is remarkable when you consider the four-wheelers and I weigh over 600 pounds, and these guys make it look different. And that's because uh, they understand what teamwork means. Their partners, the older dogs, are showing them. They have to match them stride for stride. And that's what they're doing. I can see everybody tug lines are nice and tight. They come off the harnesses. They're already doing the same amount of work. Uh, it's a great team. I have to come with command as long as we can. Hey, ha command. Remember, it's all voice steering. There's no reins or lines. So you shout out what you want. G for right, haw for left. Hike or all right, get some started to stop them. You say whoa, and then you just kind of pray. Because they, they don't like that command very much. You watch as they come back. Stopping is not what they love. Same trail, opposite way, or on the monitor if that's easier. As they come back into view here. Here we are, we're flying home. These guys are beautiful. And I don't really have to do anything because they intrinsically understand the strategy it takes to win a marathon. And of course, that strategy is that they are accelerating using all the power they save in a race. We finish strong, passing in the front. Tell you more when I get back. Now, the next place you'll see him is right through the gate to the left of the dog pen. So that's where you want to focus. By the way, I also noticed that our vessel was kind of leaning to the left a little bit. So, since you're obviously enjoying what you're seeing, I'll bet you'll be glad to know that David and some of the crew are going to join us at Chena Village when we go on shore and bring dogs with them that you can pet on the head and ask questions about, get some photos. They'll have a nice statue of the great lead dog Granite there too. So we are not done with dogs yet. And if you keep an eye on that gate, unless there was a bunny in the trail, 
which can happen sometimes on these, because these are real training runs. Here they come. On the way, I hope the brakes are working so we don't end up in the river. And nicely done, David. Another great run. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to stay on the four-wheeler for a while holding these brakes because the dogs, uh, <laughs> Whoa, their favorite command, as you know. So, uh, but as you can see, when we uh, get done running, every the other one's going into every it. dog gets a pat on the head, and then of course, just like us, they all love to play. And the dogs are not different. Oh yeah, I tell you, out of gym class and into the pool here at the Trailbreaker Resort and Spa for canine athletes. Now, David, as I mentioned when you were coming back in. We get to look forward to meeting you and some of the crew at uh, the village. You'll be bringing dogs so we can meet them too. And that beautiful statue of granite uh, that makes a nice photo spot. But bronze is not the only way your great leader has been immortalized because there's also the book about him that you and Susan wrote. And I'm hoping that if anybody decides they want one of those to remember all of this, will there be some time to visit with you about it? And maybe you could even bring a pen and write something in there? Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, one of the things that's meant the most to my family and me in these last 13 years since we lost Susan um, is when I've been able to share the, her story and that of Granite. Uh, what really touches me is how much all the kids seem to identify with him. And I think that's because he was a little puppy that nobody believed in. But because Susan had faith in him, and because they worked so hard together, uh, I remember watching him. Uh, eventually, he became the greatest lead dog in history. So if any of you would like me to personalize a copy to either yourselves, children, grandchildren, or who knows, maybe even a library, it would be my privilege to do it. Well, that sounds like a great idea, and uh, we'll look forward to that. In the meantime, David, thank you on behalf of all of us for sharing your backyard with us. Thank you so much. We'll see you downstream soon.